Hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. Today, we're back here at the camper, and we're doing a little bit of an upgrade. This isn't all that involved, I promise, but this is just the project I'm doing today, so I figured I'd bring you in along. We are replacing this manual crank jack, because if you have ever dealt with this, you know how royal pain in the butt it can be. Yes, it works just fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but why not make our lives just that little bit easier? So, we got a new one, we're gonna slap her on. Come along, let's do this together. So let me drag this big old heavy honking SOB over here. Yeah, this is the upgrade. The Lippert electric tongue jack, available on Amazon. And full disclosure, this isn't a sponsorship, this isn't a free item or anything. I bought this thing with my good old American dollars and uh, we're gonna throw this together. I did a little bit of research, it doesn't seem all that involved, but there is one upgrade that I might like to try to do. If you guys have one of these things, you may have experienced it, that the tailgate on your truck sometimes hits this thing whenever you try to open it when you're connected. So. There is a thing that you can rotate the head of this 90 degrees. It may take a little bit extra to do that, but we're gonna try it anyway. So let's go ahead and tear into this thing and see what it's all about. Go through and make ourselves a part list before we actually start doing stuff. And uh, just so you guys know, I'm, uh, I'm playing Mr. Mom again here. On the weekends, my awesome wife has a very demanding medical job, so her schedule's all over the place. So more often than not, I got the boys on the weekend. So you're probably gonna hear a lot of stuff in the background. You may even get some cameo appearances. Right now, my oldest Joe is mowing the driveway. So that's what all that is. Once we get into here, ah, this seems pretty straightforward. There is really like no assembly whatsoever. Okay, maybe we gotta fasten the foot pad on, but we'd have to take it off to install it anyway. So, uh, yeah, there she blows. That's about all there is to it. Okay, so let's get this old girl up on the bench here. Oh, I did some more digging on the other side of the box, by the way, and uh, apparently I just opened the wrong end. It comes with this manual crank to override this thing. So if you lose battery power or whatever, you can still use it. It just goes in this hole in the top here. And then some mounting hardware in that pin for the foot. FYI, just so you know, that's in the box along with the instructions. But like I mentioned earlier, the way that this thing mounts to the tongue of your trailer here, it has to index with like the way it is. It really only goes, it goes on one way. But because the head of this thing sticks forward, your tailgate may interfere with this thing whenever you try to open it when you're coupled. So that can be a royal pain in the butt. These two plugs here, there's one here and then another one exactly the same on the other side. Take these bolts out and we're gonna spin this head 90 degrees so I can face this thing out the driver's side. Not only, it, I think it'll make it more user friendly because I won't have to be in between, like it'd just be easier to get to the buttons and everything. But uh, then, hopefully, we're gonna gain a solid probably six inches of clearance here to let us open the tailgate. Oh, pull these rubber plugs out. Looks like that's a half inch head bolt, so a 7 sixteenths. Let's rip these out and then uh, see how this whole thing's put together. Oh, get your favorite bolt moving device. Or 5 sixteenths. Five, yes, wow. <laughs> You'd think I'm new at this, holy crap. I'm allowed to have a brain fart too, it's all right. All right, and this whole post assembly comes clean out of here. If you guys see up here in the motor housing, all there is is a wee little square drive output shaft to the gearbox there. And it indexes with the top of the post. So there's just a big worm gear in here that moves this thing up and down. By the way, the travel is 18 inches in case you guys are wondering. So now that we got the head off, you can see the two bolts that hold that head onto this post assembly are 180 apart from each other. We just need to add two more 
at 12 and 6. So that way, I mean, since this whole thing rotates, it obviously doesn't matter which way the head goes on. You can put it on anyway. It just has to be secured to the thing that it's turning. So uh, we're just going to go 90 degrees, blow a hole, thread it. 90 degrees, blow a hole, and thread it. So what I'm going to do here, now that we have the head like off and free, I put it back on and indexed everything so I'm sure that it, the Z is correct, that everything is actually coupled. Then I'm just going to spin this thing 90 degrees in the way that I want it to go. So whenever it's on the trailer, this will be sticking out towards the driver's side. So whenever you get out, I mean, you don't have to jump over the tongue or whatever to get to it. So this is roughly about where I want it. If you see back here, this would be the perpendicular plane to the hitch. So I want to keep this thing as close to 90 degrees as I can to make it not really look like I did this, that it's a factory option. So once I have everything pretty well lined up, I mean, just eyeball it, and it, it kind of is what it is. Now, I'm going to take a wee little bit of spray paint and go in those holes on either side. And that way, I am for sure that they're both lined up, the height is correct, the indexing at 12 and 6 is correct, everything will be perfect and there's no guessing. Cool, so take your favorite can of Pharma Implement Caterpillar Yellow, simply because that's what we have on the shelf, and give her a little spritz. Like, yeah, you're gonna get some overspray, but whatever. For what we're gaining versus a little bit of overspray, uh, who cares? Take that. Beep. Cool. Now I know definitively, for sure, without any guessing, without any measuring, anything. I'm going to get those holes dead on. I tell you what, this is the end result of our little spray paint thing. And yes, it worked, but it's not as accurate as I would like it to be. So we're going to take this a little step further. We're going to reassemble this thing exactly back to the way that we had it. But I'm going to use something known as a transfer punch. You can tell here, these are Harbor Freight. These are just crappy ones. I think this whole kit was maybe like $11. So the whole point of a transfer punch is that you get a punch with the OD of the hole that you're trying to transfer onto something. And then there is a perfectly centered little punch at the end of it. So that way, whenever it goes through the hole and you tap it, it leaves a perfect centered mark on the thing that you're trying to index. These are absolutely awesome. Cool. Now, so I have it back on here and indexed properly. It's down all the way. We're gonna take the our applicable transfer punch. You see how it fits in that hole just about perfectly? It's not great, but the next one is just a little bit too big to fit in there. So this is gonna be definitely good enough for our application. Then take your favorite uh, swing press here just give her a tap, tap, tap a -roo. And that's enough. That will give you a wee little indication on, in this application, the post. In case you guys are wondering, that horrendously loud noise in the background is the, uh, the fake pull start on the lawnmower that he was using to do the driveway earlier. So, evidently he's out of gas or we need some starter fluid or something, but we'll put that on the docket for later. So rotate this thing 180, do the other hole. A little taparoo. Now I'll show you how perfect that is. You see here? See that wee little mark? I guess it's kind of hard to see. But over there it's a little bit better. But that is perfectly center of the hole in the head. So we'll drill these out and go ahead and tap them. So we're going to double check this fastener here. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but you heard me stumble earlier. So take my thread gauge here and 5 16 18. Now we know for sure it's a 5 16 18 hole, so we can pre-drill appropriately. And I just so happen to have a little chart here on the wall that uh, tells me here for 5 16 18 course 1764 pre-drill well let's dig through the index and find the one we need man i really wish there was a better way to get you guys in here for some more uh clear shot video here but uh it seems as though the garage has turned into a shop slash toys r us so there is so much stuff everywhere and uh, i've just kind of learned to deal with it so we will 
get everything lined up as good as we possibly can. Make sure it is nice and 90 degrees with the spindle. And let's go ahead and sink this thing. I tell you what, before we do that, I'm going to shove some paper towels down in here to keep the shavings out of it. Cool. See, nothing special. Just a paper towel. Go ahead and line this back up. Make sure everything's good and square. Like I said, 90 degrees. Line up with our punch hole there. Oh man, evidently somebody didn't square up that drill bit in the truck. Holy crap, this is like high school shop class. Let's try that again, shall we? It's almost like there's three flats on a Jacob's truck for a reason. Huh. All right. We'll do this again. Secure it down a little bit. Line it up. That's better. And we'll sink it. I'll tell you what, let's give this old girl a little lube. Some tap magic from a tin can. That's right. Help the medicine go down. Sweet. One down. Let's go ahead, flipper 180. Do the other. Sweet. Now we have our pre drilled holes. We can go ahead and tap this. Now, don't get me wrong, you guys don't need a drill press. And besides, this one isn't exactly the most exciting drill press in the world. But it is cool to have at least something so you can fixture some stuff. But uh, yeah, let's grab a tap and sink it in. Cool, now we're over here at the bench. We have this thing fixtured in a different vise. Let's uh, take our applicable 5 16 18 national course. In case you're wondering, the, the three tap setup here, this is a starting tap, a through tap, and a bottom tap. So it's just nice that uh, like, if you have a blind hole, like a kit like that's kind of necessary. But for what we're doing, doesn't matter all that much. Fixture that thing in the handle. Little lube on the hole, little lube on the tap. And in case you're wondering, that uh, paper towel is still in there, so the shavings from this won't affect anything. My little man's trying to get his truck out from behind the camera. So, keep an eye on this thing as you're doing it, and try your best to keep this thing vertical, like nice and plumb. I know it's not going to be perfect, but I think for what we're doing here, perfect isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it just has to go through and thread in. So, we got that one all situated. And uh, let's flip it over and do the other side. Start with a little lube on both. Just like mountain tires, whenever you're tapping threads, the wetter the better. Cool, now that we got threads, we'll clean this thing up, maybe deburr those holes a little bit, and uh, reinstall the head. So we'll take our uh, deburring tool here. Just take it off the edge there. And in case you guys are interested, I'll link all this stuff in the description. I mean, like I said, you don't need to use all this stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it is nice to have different things, different ways to do things. So, now that our holes are all done, cleaned up, take our paper towel out of there. Let's not forget to do that. And we'll just check in here for any extra stuff laying around. Cool. It looks like the paper towel did the trick. There is no foreign nothing in there, just the grease that it came with from the factory. Please excuse the state of the workbench here, but uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. So, we will take our head, 
throw it back on there index everything until it falls down there you go I'm looking through the hole here and I can see that the bolt holes line up with the holes that I made so once we got it the direction that we're facing and there you go I think uh, throw a wee little bit of Loctite on these since there's no lock washer just to be safe and then we'll throw them in where did you go there we go all right blue Loctite not red unless you feel like shooting yourself in the foot later there's a little dabble do you little dab of blue Loctite shove that in there I'm not going to tighten it up all the way because I need to. I may need to wiggle for the other side. So a little bit of blue Loctite on the other bolt. Go ahead, get started in there. Take your gun. Look at that. It's almost like we transferred these holes perfectly. I tell you, is what I feel like that worked out freaking awesome. So now we can actually go back out of the trailer, remove the old manual one, and install this old girl. Nice, now that we're back outside here, I am going to start digging through the toolkit here. I keep a bottle jack in here, because I feel like this is the best way. If you need to on the side of the road change a tire on one of these things, this is the best. This is one of those Daytonas from Harbor Freight. I think this was maybe like 50 or 60 bucks. But uh, the travel on this thing is crazy for a 12 ton. I think it's like, I don't know, 18 or 20 inches or something. It's actually rather impressive. So we'll uh, get a block or two, some six buys or something. And maybe uh, rip this off, give us some room here. And in case you guys are wondering, this whole setup here, this is just like a something so I can see whenever I'm pulling up here with uh, it, even just the car that I park in front of here normally. You can't see the tongue from the driver's seat, so I gave it this little guy, so you know when you're too close, don't smash. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jack this thing up and remove the old jack. All right, so I got a spare six by here that I think will suffice perfectly. I'll tell you what, I think I've got a two by two. Or should I say two by also? It's not a two by two. Silly goose. Yeah, that'll be fine. We can use the screw on the jack to get us up the rest of the way. Because this doesn't have to go up far. It just has to go up enough. Hey, Joe. Hi. This is my little helper. He helps me do everything. Yeah. So, I find us a good spot right under the tongue here. Make sure that she's ready to go. Right, we'll take her up just enough to get the tension off the tongue jack. Look at that. And don't worry guys, wheels are chalked, all that good stuff. But you can tell here, the, the tongue jack's already loose. That's all we needed. I just That was maybe half an inch, maybe. So yeah, that's perfectly fine. Now we can loosen this thing and remove it and not have any worries. We'll go ahead, get our impact gun again. This just happens to be a 9 16 Yours may not be. But mine is. Man. I tell you guys what. One thing here I am super not stoked about is uh, there's no nuts on the bottom of these. They just thread into this like 3 16 plate on the tongue. So all of your trailer tongue weight, which this one's like, I think 800 some pounds, it's just sitting on the threads of a couple of 3 8 bolts. So yeah, that may be fine and dandy for factory, but we're gonna do better. Whenever I put this thing back in, we're gonna thread it back in like it was, but I'm gonna put some lock nuts on the bottom of these and then it'll just make me feel better. So now that we got the bolts taken out, I'll take the foot off the jack and uh, Bob's your uncle. There you go. There's the factory guy. And uh, put that off to the side with the real important stuff. Now that we got our egress with the old one out of there, you simply uh, 
plop the new one where that one used to be. And uh, I plumb forgot to put the beauty caps in over these holes that are here back on the bench. So we can do that now before I forget. So now that we have that in there, reinstall our hardware and I'm going to go check and make sure that I have nuts for these just so it'll be easier and I don't have to fight with it later. Cool. We got some nylon lock nuts. These are definitely 3 8 16. So I'm just going to put those on the bottom side of that plate. It'll make me feel a lot better. So we'll start these all by hand as to not uh, hopefully ruin the already mildly crappy factory threads here. Get everything back in there. And uh, we'll go ahead and sink those down. Take our impact. Yeah, I'm sure there's a torque spec for that, but good luck uh, contacting the camper manufacturer and getting any information. So now that those are all the way in, they're sticking out the bottom, I don't know, probably three eighths of an inch or something, just enough to get a good bite on these. So I collected me a ratchet with the applicable 9 sixteenths. We'll start these on. I feel like that front one may be impossible to get to, but even just with two of three on here, I'll still feel a lot better. Tighten these down. Like I've said, this is a totally extra step. You don't need to do this, but why not? We're in here. Hi, Joey. Hi. You having fun? Yeah. All right. You playing in the rocks? Yeah. Cool. So, unless my hands are the size of Joe's, I really don't think that I'm going to get in there. I mean, maybe with some creativity, we could uh, stick this on a socket and maybe try to start it. But the only accessible point from underneath isn't directly under that. It's kind of on a kilter. So, mm, I don't know. We may have to call this good enough. I'm not crazy about it, but at least it's better than what it was. So now that we have everything uh, mounted up, the only thing that's left to do is wire. So at least uh, the manufacturer of this thing is cool. They uh, already stripped the end of this. We're gonna put a lug on the end of this thing so I can connect it right onto the hot stud of the battery. So we'll take the appropriate size lug there, crimp it on. Give her a good squeeze, and now I slide some heat shrink over there. Because, like I said, we're in this. Why not take the time to do it right? I mean, this will be inside of the battery box anyway. But honestly, what could this possibly hurt? To take this few seconds for an extra step, and not to mention it looks factory. So cool. Let's route our wire out to the battery, and, and we can do a function test. Now we're back here at the battery box. And since I have extra, I'm going to opt just to uh, shove this fuse down inside here. So not only will it be weather protected, but it takes up that slack that we had here. So all I need to do is simply remove this hot stud and install it. So I think, matter of fact, just so happens, that's 916, so that's what we were using before. So I even got the right thing. I'll shut off power to the camper just in case we accidentally ground something here. Take off this stud and uh, install the hot lead for our brand new power jack. And I tell you what, since this is a smaller, delicate stud or lug here, I'm going to put it in between these two bigger ones. In case you guys are wondering, you can see here, I have two batteries. These are wired in parallel, meaning I still retain the original 12 volts that everything is supposed to have, but I drastically increase the amperage. 
And with these deep cycle batteries here for campers, that is what matters. That's what gives you that runtime that you're looking for. So if you were to wire these in series, you would double the voltage. So it would go from 12 to 24. That's not good. You would blow up everything inside your camper. So these are wired in parallel. So we have more amperage, same voltage. Cool little tech tip here in case you were wondering. Now that everything's wired up, simply just put our lid back on the battery box here. Throw the strap back on that thing and we are done with wiring. Now we're back up front here. Oh, we got light. I mean, it's not all that bright. It's the middle of the day right now, but let's run it. Man, that is quiet. You guys hear that? Look. I was, uh, I was expecting a lot more noise than that, but I'm pleasantly surprised at how quiet it is. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but honestly, you don't want it to be fast. Whenever you're scooting around 6,000 some odd pounds here, you wanna have control over it. So low speed, high torque, this is what you get. Honestly, I love it. I'm kind of glad that it's that slow. I really wouldn't want it any faster. So before we get too far along here, I'm gonna reinstall the foot pad because I know I'm probably gonna forget to. So sweet, now we got that extra one that came with the old one and we'll just run this thing down. And we're just about there and uh, we got contact. Now we can go ahead and drop the bottle jack and put the weight on this. It's a little loose already. Coming down on the bottle. Look at that, barely even moved. Sweet. I really think the last thing we have to do is just a little bit of cable management. Use some zip ties, clean this thing up, put that cover back on the propane tank and call this thing a win. Now, let's throw some zip ties around this thing just to clean it up. I mean, why not? So you just stuff like this. Take a little bit of pride in your work. Why not? Make it look good. Cool, we'll snip off the tails here. Do a couple zip ties underneath to keep uh, everybody up out of the way and happy. Now that all that's done, I'm gonna slap the cover back on the propane tank here. In case you're wondering, there's plenty of room. I can fit my whole hand back here so it's not rubbing on anything. So like I mentioned before, I wanted to spin this thing to give my tailgate room to open. And obviously my truck's not even over here. I'm just betting that that's probably going to be the case. So I just take the time to do it now. And if I found out later that that doesn't need to happen, those old holes are still there. So if I need to, or if I want to, I can flip this thing back to where it was. It's, it's not that big of a deal. I just think that this is a good upgrade anyway. It just makes everything a lot more streamlined. Cool guys, so that about does it for this one. I hope uh, you got something out of this. Maybe you're looking to do this for your own camper or heck, maybe you just wanted to be entertained for a couple 20 some odd minutes. But uh, yeah, there we go, project well done. Super easy install. I mean, the only thing I had to provide was a crimp lug for the wire on the battery. And uh, heck man, I don't know, get creative. Do whatever you need to do to make it work but clearly it grounds through the frame, just like everything else is grounded to the chassis, so this thing does the same thing. And even if you wanna modify it, you saw how easy it was. It was, heck man, I don't know, 10 minutes, drill some holes, tap some threads, and Bob's your uncle. But if you guys are interested in this stuff, uh, I'll go ahead and do my best to list everything, parts and tools that I used in this little thing in the description, so you guys can do it if you want to. So uh, yeah, hopefully you get a kick out of it, and we'll see you guys next time.